Hello and welcome to the Empowered Expat Wife podcast. If you moved abroad following your significant other and are looking to create a fulfilled life on your terms there, this is the place to be. I'm your host, Camilla Quintana, and I'm so excited to be on this journey with you and to inspire you to create the kind of life abroad you truly deserve. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Empowered Expat Wife podcast. I'm your host, Camilla Quintana. I'm so excited to be back with you today. And I hope you had a good start into the new year. I hope you had a nice Christmas break, despite all the restrictions we're facing in most parts of the world, at least. Um, I surely had a great time, even though, you know, it, it does get pretty intense when uh, the family is around all the time, the kids are home, there's lots of cooking, there's lots of cleaning, a um, little me time. So I'm actually looking forward to Monday. Is that really bad for me to say? I, I feel bad, but it's the truth. <laughs> all right. So today I want to talk to you about expat fatigue. You know the feeling. It's when you've lived in a place for a considerable time, the novelty has worn off, and you just feel like same old, same old. You might be feeling bored, without perspective, maybe even depressed. For some of you, the sensation reaches an even broader span when you feel like you're just tired of the lifestyle you lead per se. You know, relocating every few years, moving in, moving out, the paperwork, the adaptation, the saying hello, saying goodbye. I mean, that can really start weighing on you too. And especially this time of year, it's something that a lot of expats go through, I believe. And I see that in my client sessions as well. I don't know if it has to do with Christmas break just being over or with the gray and grim weather many countries face in January. I mean, I know we are just, I'm looking outside the window and it's just raining nonstop. It is, it is really frustrating, you guys. <laughs> or, or it may be, you know, just the realization that a new year has just started, that summer is still far away. I don't know what it is, but it's just January is the typical month where expat fatigue, I think, is is big on, on a lot of expats' minds. And also, of course, after a year like we've had, you know, 2020 is behind us, um, where many of us have been confined to, to our homes. We've been social distancing for almost a year now. It's just, uh, it's, it's been so long. We've just radically limited our plans and distractions and diversions and Living through all of that away from home also, I mean, a little fatigue seems like a logical consequence after what we've been through. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> all right, so as I was outlining the episode on expat fatigue and just, um, you know, collecting my ideas and thinking about what I wanted to talk to you about, I realized I had to split this into different parts. Yes, I do, because it is a huge topic. <laughs> And um, also because one thing I learned during lockdown is that when you're in a low state of mind, it's difficult to jump right to the solution and basically leave all your troubles behind. There are simply too many steps in between where your head and your feelings are right now and where you want to be. And so this would require tremendous effort that you probably don't have the strength for right now that you are battling expat fatigue and all those unpleasant feelings. So that's why in this first episode, in this, in this part one, I'm going to focus on positively changing your state of mind, improving your mood, raising your vibration and all of that. I'm also going to do a powerful energy cleansing technique with you in the end, so you'll want to stick around for that. And from that elevated state of mind, which I'll help you get into, and which is the prerequisite for solving this, this problem that is expat fatigue and, and this feeling of being stuck and just not having perspective, I'm going to bring a part two to you next week. And there I'll spend a few minutes sharing some quick fixes, you know, things that you can do to just basically snap out of this feeling, some practical tools, some hacks that you may read about elsewhere as well. 
But then for the most time of the, the next episode, I want to look at the root cause of this feeling, ladies. That's what we have to look at. And that's something that's not being talked about a lot. But the only way I am certain that you're really going to combat this feeling of boredom, of stuckness and emptiness is by digging a little deeper and solving this issue at its core. Okay, but for now, for this first part of the expat fatigue series, let's call it, um, let's focus on how we can raise your vibration and change your state. As I said, the better and stronger you feel, the easier it will be for you to overcome any obstacle and adversity and to encounter and attract positive things into your life. And I know you know that's true. So what does that mean to raise our vibration, our energetic frequency? Well, essentially, everything that exists in this world is made up of energy. Therefore, everything has an energetic frequency and so do our thoughts and feelings. Dr. David Hawkins used muscle testing to associate our feelings with an energetic frequency. And I'll put a graph of this in the session notes because I think it's really important for you to see and to evaluate where you hang out emotionally most of the time. You know, we all have a so-called emotional home. We have go-to emotions that we're just wired to experience. And when I say wired, you know, this is something that's created that's it's basically a habit, right? So um, if you have a habit of uh, reacting to a certain circumstance with anger, let's just say, you create those neural pathways in your brain and it will become increasingly easier for you to respond with anger to something unpleasant that happens. If you respond with crying a lot, then your brain has been wired, you know, to go to that and by the way, I'm just going to let you know, if you hear some weird noises in the background, that's my baby. It's sleeping right now, but he might wake up and he might make some of those noises. So I, I apologize for him. <laughs> um, okay, so where were we? Neural pathways. Our brain is wired in a certain way because what we're living and experiencing on a regular basis is what's also coming to us much easier. But just so you know, we can also unwire our brain. And I've, I'm going to actually, I'm going to link a blog post that I wrote about this in the session notes. So if you're interested in reading a little more on that, then uh, by all means, check out the session notes. And you may also want to check out, you know, books by Joe Dispenza, which are great. So the bottom line is when you know the energetic frequency, the vibration of the feelings you experience on a regular basis, you can know what it is you'll need to work on, where you can level up, you know, just one level to just reach a higher frequency because obviously you want to be in the upper half of this chart most of the time. Still, having said that, the first tool I want to share with you in order to raise your vibration is a self-compassion break. Self-compassion is so important because when you feel bad for whatever reason, and when you suffer from expat fatigue, you are feeling pretty bad, right? A lot of times you will just beat yourself up over it. And by doing that, you're actually making matters worse. So you need to be kind to yourself in the hard times more than ever. And you'll see in the chart that shame and guilt are at the very bottom of our states of consciousness. So these feelings really are the lowest vibration and practicing self-love and compassion can lift you up from there. And that's crucial. So a self-compassion break consists of three steps that you can quickly go through all by yourself. Um, the first step is to acknowledge your feelings. You know, say something to yourself like, I'm hurting right now. This is really difficult for me, right? So you just notice what is going on. You might want to give it a name, what you're feeling. You know, I'm feeling sad. I, I feel like I'm stuck. I'm not living to my full potential. I don't know what I'm doing here. This is really hard for me. Um, just acknowledge what it is that is going through your head right now. Then the second step is 
validating you're not the only one and that's really important to know because it'll help you to not be so hard on yourself so you can tell yourself things like others are struggling with this too you know when it when it comes to expat fatigue let me tell you a lot of people do at certain times in their expat life and it's totally normal you might also want to tell yourself it's okay for me to feel that way and it really is And then the third step is basically just asking yourself, how can I show myself some kindness right now? You know, the kind of kindness that your best friend or a loved one would show you or that you would show them. So just by asking this question, what is it that I really need right now? I told you that in a, in a previous episode. What is it that I need right now? What can I do to be kind to myself right now? And what's really important here is to really just aim at baby steps rather than pushing yourself to just feel great again when you don't, which is probably unrealistic and probably just adds additional pressure on you. Just ask yourself, what is one thing I could do or think or say to myself right now to feel a little better, just a little better. A little is a lot, guys. A little is a lot. Oh my God, this is going into my quotes. A little is a lot. I, I love it. <laughs> and, then, um, and then also ask yourself, how could I climb up just one step on that ladder of my emotional well-being? And then afterwards, when you're ready, you take another step and another one. And you'll see there's always an answer to these questions. So what is one little thing that I can do to feel better? What is one step that I could take to feel a little better? There's always an answer to that one, even though in the big picture, it might seem really difficult to attain, you know? For instance, how am I going to be happy in this country when right now I'm not? Or how am I going to love my lifestyle if right now I'm so fed up with it? Ooh, that's a big question. You don't want to start there. You, don't, you want to start with the easiest part, the most imminent thing that you can do, okay? All right, so that was the first... A tool that I suggest you apply when you're trying to change your state because as I said self-compassion is so important and beating ourselves up for feeling bad is the most counterproductive thing you can do okay so the second thing I want to talk to you about is our posture now this sounds a little weird possibly but have you noticed what your body does when you're down when you're feeling bad Your shoulders probably slump, you slouch, your breathing becomes shallow. Breathing is a big one, as you know. So your posture really indicates you, to your brain what mental state you're in. And your brain will do what it always does. It looks for evidence on the outside for our inside thoughts. That's called you know, the reticular activating system in our brain that's in charge of that. And um, so by changing our physical state and our posture, we can actually change our emotional state as well because it will interrupt our negative thought pattern and send completely different signals to our brain of, of liveliness, of positivity, as if it were to say, it's okay, I can cheer up now, you know, I'm inhaling deeply and exhaling deeply. That has an immediate calming effect on your brain and on your body because remember ladies our brain doesn't have eyes it doesn't know what's going on on the outside it just processes the thoughts that we are having and if they are of stress our brain is going to react and it's going to send signals to all of our cells that there is some kind of danger out there because stress is a danger to our system and to our body and our, our mind and our brain. So let's not underestimate the power that this connection has on our emotional well-being. Let's not underestimate the power of posture. So to change your physical state, you can try things like jumping around dancing to a song you love, maybe even create a playlist of some old songs that you listened to when you were young and uh, just dance around and have a good time. Then, of course, there's taking a walk outside in nature. Nature is, is always great to change our state of mind also. And then there's exercise. 
And yes, you can use a punching bag if you want <laughs> or any exercise that you enjoy. And last but not least, try and laugh. A laughing is scientifically proven to send happy signals to your brain. So do try that out as well. All right, so the next tool I want to talk to you about is gratitude. And I wish I could do an episode without talking about gratitude because everyone is talking about gratitude. It's so boring. It's, it's gotten so cliche. And I feel like the, the problem with this is that I think a lot of your brains will shut off right now when I talk about gratitude because you're like, oh yeah, right, I know about that. I read about that all the time. But still, it is so important and it is so good. And gratitude is one of the highest calibrating feelings in David Hawkins' chart that you will find in my session notes. And I told you before, it's what helps me the most in my daily life to raise my vibration. So do you notice all the blessings you've been given? Can you fully appreciate them? Think of three things that you're grateful for every day. They can be totally random and totally unrelated to the challenges you're experiencing. Like in the case of expat fatigue, don't force yourself to find three things you love about your host country, you know, because that might just create some resistance in you or it may send you back into this guilt and shame zone that we talked about that is really unhealthy to be in. Rather, I want you to just tap into that feeling of gratitude and experience it as much as possible in your daily life. You can be grateful for the weather, for your pet, for something that happened in the past even. All that matters is that you get that lovely, warm, fuzzy feeling of gratitude and appreciation and you enjoy that as much as possible on a daily basis. And another way to raise your vibration and change your state is by generally adopting healthy habits. So, uh, for instance, what are you consuming both physically and mentally? You know, the food that you're eating, is that clean, organic, fresh produce or is it junk food and soft drinks? Um, Are you limiting your exposure to negative media, be it series or movies or the news? Then what about rants? Do you spend much time doing that or listening to others ranting and criticizing a lot? Because that is really unhealthy and it's also really unkind. Um, Do you exercise? Do you meditate? Do you pray? What are your daily habits and how can you upgrade them? Make them healthier so that they serve you and improve your physical and mental state. All right, so let's summarize. In order to change your state and raise your vibration, I'd like for you to practice self-compassion, like with the self-compassion break that I told you about, focusing only on the next baby step to feeling better rather than the ultimate solution. Then to watch out for your posture because our posture really does send signals to our brain as well as to other people and it can affect our mental well-being then to tap into the powerful feeling of gratitude as much as you can and to establish overall healthy habits or to reduce unhealthy ones and substitute some of them with healthy ones. And now to end the session on a high note, I'm going to take you through a cleansing exercise. It's called the subconscious release technique, in which I'm actually getting certified in, just that the baby got in between, so I'm a little behind with that. Um, But it consists of liberating subconscious blocks that make it difficult for us to feel better and to vibrate higher. I've been doing this technique with all of my last clients and with friends I've been, you know, practicing and they are reported feeling lighter and happier afterwards. So this should really grant some relief to you. And even though I'm doing this in a generic matter, so to to do this properly, I'd have to talk to each of you personally and I would be very happy to do that actually. So just If you're interested in doing a a personalized SRT session, which uh, is very powerful, then email me at info at camillacintana.com. You'll find my email in the session notes and I'd be happy to arrange something. But for now, let's do a generic one based on the experiences that I've made 
myself and with clients with expat fatigue, okay? Just maybe try and go somewhere quiet. You probably shouldn't be driving. It'll just take a few minutes. So ready when you are. All right, so I'm going to focus this subconscious release session on two statements that commonly appear in people dealing with expat fatigue, which are, I don't want to be here and I'm powerless. All right, so you can close your eyes if you want and just follow my lead. In a second, I want you to take a deep breath in, hold your breath, listen to the statement that I'm reading out to you, and then exhale when I, when I say so. All right, this will create a little shock in your system and your subconsciousness to really release the blockage. All right, let's go. Take a deep breath in and hold. I release all anger with, I don't want to be here. Exhale. Take a deep breath in and hold. I release all annoyance with, I don't want to be here. And exhale. Take a deep breath in and hold. I release all boredom with, I don't want to be here. Exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all discontent with, I don't want to be here. And exhale. I release all frustration with, I don't want to be here. Deep breath in. I release all grief with, I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all hopelessness with, I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all judgment with, I don't want to be here. And exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all overwhelm with, I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all pain with, I don't want to be here. Exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all pressure with, I don't want to be here. And exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all resentment with, I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all sadness with, I don't want to be here. And exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all stress with, I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with appreciation with, I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with belief with, I don't want to be here. And release. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with creativity with, I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with fulfillment with I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with gratitude with I don't want to be here. Exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with happiness with I don't want to be here. One more time. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with peace with I don't want to be here. And exhale. I just take a couple of breaths normally. And then we're going to go on to the second program. I'm powerless. So let's start again. Deep breath in and hold. I release all anxiety with I'm powerless. Deep breath in and hold. I release all disappointment with I'm powerless. Exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all embarrassment with I'm powerless. I release all frustration with I'm powerless. Deep breath in and hold. I release all frustration with I'm powerless. Deep breath in and hold. I release all hopelessness with I'm powerless. Exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all hurt with I'm powerless. Deep breath in and hold. 
I release all resentment with I'm powerless. Deep breath in and hold. I release all shame with I'm powerless. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with enjoyment with I'm powerless. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with faith with I'm powerless. Exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with fulfillment with I'm powerless. And exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with hope with I'm powerless. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with love with I'm powerless. And one last time, deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with safety with I'm powerless. All right, very good. So just take a couple of normal breaths. And now that we've released blockages, you know, we've really liberated some space in our subconsciousness, we're going to use that space to fill it up with something more positive, something that serves us, something that will guide us, the so-called fillers, all right? So again, we're gonna do the same procedure. You're gonna take a deep breath and hold, and after I'm done reading a short statement, a short affirmation, so to speak, you're gonna exhale, all right? Ready? Let's go. Deep breath in and hold. I'm happy and grateful because I have the power to change my life. <sighs> exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I'm happy and grateful because all of my experiences combined have made me who I am. And exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I'm happy and grateful because I have a unique purpose and mission here on earth. And exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I'm happy and grateful because I've got what it takes to master this challenge. Exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I am happy and grateful because every day I can start over and choose again. Exhale. Deep breath in and hold. I am happy and grateful because there are so many opportunities waiting for me to be discovered. And exhale. And now you can do too freely with some statements, some affirmations that probably have come to your mind. So just take a deep breath in, hold, think that affirmation or say it out loud and exhale. And one more time, take a deep breath in and hold, say or think that affirmation that's probably come to your mind and exhale. Wow, I feel light, I feel optimistic, I feel relieved. I really hope you do too and I hope that you'll spend this week elevating your state of mind, raising your vibration further with the tools that I shared and with the effects of this subconscious release session that I've just done with you. And I know that next week we'll be able to meet again here through this podcast with an elevated state of mind that will really allow us to tackle this topic of expat fatigue that so many of us are dealing with and um, deal with it at its core and really say bye-bye <laughs> to this feeling for good. So I very much look forward to that. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you'll have a lovely week. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to share this episode with your expat besties and show me some love in the reviews. Want more juicy content designed for expat wives? Then head over to my website, www.camillaquintana.com or follow me on Instagram and Facebook at coach.camillaquintana.